My name is John Miller, and I'm a professor in the Department of Cell Biology and Neuroscience, and I'm also the director of the Center for Computational Biology, which is where we're sitting down here now. And I'm a neurophysiologist by training and practice, and that means that I study the physiology of the nervous system. So I've always been interested in a broad range of, uh, of different scientific disciplines. So ever since I was a kid, I wanted to either be a fire truck or a scientist. Fire truck didn't work out, not too practical, and that was more in the four or five year old range anyway. Uh, but I never lost the notion that to be a scientist was really cool. I was an undergraduate in, uh, in the physics department, actually got my undergraduate degree in physics, but during that time I took a wide range of science courses from biology and chemistry, physics, also uh, uh, the peripheral fields like anthropology, things like that. Um, and it was the last couple of semesters worth of courses I took in my senior year where I took some neurophysiology courses, that means physiology of the nervous system, very quantitative, very different than a typical biology class, certainly very different than something like biochemistry. Uh, and it was different in the sense that here were these professors that were explaining how your brain worked, or how they thought parts of your brain worked. And I remember a very inspiring set of lectures by a professor that talked about how your eye worked based on the circuitry of how all the cells were set up, connected to one another, and what the properties were. Here was a guy that was actually telling you how you saw and explaining some aspects of uh, 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 visual illusions. And this was amazing to me, it was spectacular. And so from that point on, I decided to translate everything that I knew about physics and electronics and biology into a pursuit of trying to figure out how the brain works. And I've been doing that ever since. I got my undergraduate degree, so my Bachelor of Arts degree in physics from UC Berkeley. And then uh, it was near the end of that period that I got really interested in neuroscience. And so my PhD was actually in biology, and I got that at UC San Diego down in La Jolla. And the um, system I studied was actually the uh, system in the lobster. So that was one great perk. You would do an experiment on the lobster, and then that night you could eat the, eat the rest of the lobster. Uh, I went on to do um, postdoctoral research at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. And that was in something totally different. Technically it was applied mathematics, but it was really computational neuroscience. And uh, so it was a progression right, from physics to technically biology to applied math. And then I went back to Berkeley, was lucky enough to get a job uh, at uh, University of California at Berkeley, and was there for 15 years before I came here to Montana State University about 15 years ago. And uh, all the time at Berkeley and then here, I've done a combination of teaching and research. Had a lot of grad students, uh, advanced undergrads, and uh, taught during that whole stretch, both at Berkeley and here. And then where, where I fit in, my interests have always been in what's called functional neuroscience. So what we want to do is to look at some behavior or capability of a nervous system and then figure out how it works. Not how it develops or what the biochemical nature of all the synapses are, but basically to come up with something like a model or a circuit diagram for how it works in the same sense that a computer scientist would explain how part of a computer worked. And so the you know, basic focus is imagine you find a watch or a clock or something like that and you know that it tells the time but you want to figure out how it works. You know, how all the little gears and, and gizmos work inside. What you have to do is pry it apart, look inside, and do experiments, which means you may take a gear out, see if that um, changes things. Obviously, if you scrape a number off the front, it's not going to change how the clock works. So you, you, that's the same thing we do to nervous systems. We crack them open, we take them apart, put them back together again, modify them certain ways, and uh, really go in and figure out how it works. And of course, we don't take them apart mechanically. We dissect them. And instead of yanking out gears or, uh, or breaking parts of the innards of these systems, we, uh, the typical approach is to insert electrodes. So insert electrical probes that allows you either to monitor the activity within certain of these elements or actually shock the cells and get them to do something they wouldn't normally do and see how it kind of screws up the operation of the system in a way that gives you information 
about uh, how all the, the gears and bells and whistles all plug together to do what they do. A lot of people I talk to always, the, you know, the fundamental question is, well, how close are we to figuring out how the brain works? And so a good answer that, to that is that we are slowly but surely figuring out how the brain works step by step. Uh, there's not ever going to be any big aha moment where somebody figures out how the brain works the way that somebody just discovered the existence of the Higgs boson. Or there's never going to be a theory for how the brain works that is something like E equals MC squared. There's not going to be a general relativity theory or anything like that. Basically, we are figuring out how important parts of uh, the brain and other nervous systems work in these uh, steps, which are all adding up over time to uh, major advances in, uh, in understanding this stuff.